Hey there, Danielle at Vine Skills. I just wanted to walk you through the process of adding contacts and managing contacts in your FileVine system. So throughout your FileVine system, throughout projects, you're gonna see these uh, person fields, which are uh, fields where you're gonna enter the contact card of the appropriate field. So for example, in this case, we're talking about defendant contact details. In this case, we're talking about a name of a uh, personal representative. So we're gonna be adding the personal representative contact here and the defendant contact here. So in FileVine, all of your contacts that you've added previously are saved in the contacts tab, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, when you are entering the person that you're looking for, you're going to start to type to search. And what's going to happen is a list of um, either contacts of the same type, whether if, if that's built that way on the back end, or just contacts in general that have a similar name are going to start to appear. So for example, if I start typing Money Penny, which is the name of our client, we'll see that she appears here in this list. Also, their contact type, if given one, will also appear here. So for the personal representative, if I go to type a name, let's do Tina Schmidt. It's telling me that there's no match found. Now that we know that there is not a Tina Schmidt who lives uh, in our file line system as a contact, we can go ahead and add that contact card by either hitting add person here or hitting this button right here. This is what we call a contact card. So anytime you're creating a new contact, it's best practice to enter all of the fields with any information that you have. If it's a company that you're dealing with, it's automatically going to, excuse me, it's automatically going to default to a person. So first, middle, and last name. But if you're dealing with a business, you can toggle on this building icon and it will kind of change the, uh, the way, the structure of the contact card. So if this is a, a person and we're doing Tina Schmidt, we can put their prefix here, a nickname if, if applicable, um, depending on the contact, maybe if it's an adjuster or a doctor from a practice, you can enter their company here. In this case, that doesn't, uh, doesn't apply. Same thing for department and job title. Then at the bottom, you have your phone, your email, and your address, and you can add up to seven of each. So if they have different phone numbers, you can go ahead and add a new phone number. Also, you wanna, you're going to wanna make sure you label appropriately especially if it's a fax or if it's a, um, a mobile number for texting purposes. So for example, if this is her phone number, but let's say she has a personal mobile number and we're gonna wanna text uh, her eventually, we can give her this number with this label. Then we can go over and give her an email address, enter her email address. And if she had an additional email address, we can go ahead and add that here. And then finally, we can add her address here. If we wanted to add an additional address, we would just hit that. And it's also really important to um, enter the most important address first, where you're going to send your doctrines to, uh, your letters. You want to make sure you're putting the, the main email address first and the main phone number first, because for doctrin purposes, typically the first address, the first phone number, the first email are the ones that are coded into it. So just be mindful of the order of your um your entries, especially if there are more than one. Another thing to note here is you'll see these plus signs to uh, the right of the entries. This is to kind of add a note. So for example, if you're dealing with maybe, um, you know, a court and there is an extension you want to add, it's nice to kind of just add that note in here. It doesn't apply in this type of contact that we're entering because technically it's the personal representative, but if we wanted to, we could do that and it will turn yellow if there is a note there, just to keep in mind. 
Also, you'll see this copy to clipboard icon. This is nice, especially if you're uh, writing a letter or something like that and you want to come here and just copy the address, you can do that. In addition, you'll have a details tab. These are customizable. So for each firm, it will be different, um, you know, depending on how it's built on the back end for each firm. This is where you'll come to usually enter like the social security number, uh, the marital status, if it's a minor. Um, you can also attach documents, write notes about the contact. And when we're entering data in a contact card, just remember that the information kind of lives with them no matter what project they're in. So this contact card is completely independent of the project in which it lives. So any data you enter here, if for example, this was a medical provider, you it would be um, it would still live in this contact card if you were to put that medical provider contact in another project as well. There may also be additional tabs up at the top. This is stuff that's built on the back end. So it's important to just look at the uh, tabs and make sure you're entering all the data that it asks for and then you have. You can always update these in the future. And then also you want to make sure you're selecting your contact type. This list here is what we have in our sandbox, but your firm may have other contact types. So just be mindful. You want to select the most appropriate contact type here, and you can select more than one. So for example, if you have a medical provider who maybe is a lien holder in another situation, you can, you can select medical provider as well as lien holder, and different fields will populate based on that contact type in the details tab, as well as in any other tabs that are created. Trying to think, let's just put client for this one and I'm gonna hit create. And now my contact card for Tina Schmidt is set and I can use Tina Schmidt in any other project if necessary. In this situation, as a personal representative, that may not be the case, but if it were a doctor or a lien holder or an insurance adjuster, you're gonna create one contact card and continue to use that contact card throughout your FileVine system. You would do the same for the defendant. So let's say your defendant was John Smith. You'll see here we have some uh, clients with similar names, as well as other types of uh, individuals, medical provider, client, and then some without any contact types. If they are in the list, you can go ahead and add them just by clicking it, and then you can go ahead and hit save. Any contact that you add in a project in any section on the left will be also saved in your contact section. So let's find it over here. I had to come to another project in our sandbox to kind of locate the contact section, but you guys will have a contact section in your um, FileVine system. So this is kind of what it looks like, and it will kind of give you the name, the contact name, the role that they are in this project specifically, their address, email, <clears throat> and their phone number. You can also add contacts, so maybe they don't, um, you know, maybe they're not appropriate for a specific section on the side, maybe not intake, but maybe you want to add them, maybe as another uh, yeah, relative or someone else that you can contact in the case that you can't get in touch with the client, you can go ahead and add them here. You can either search for them or you can go ahead and add them here, just as you would normally. You can also filter your contacts here. So let's say I wanted to look for this contact. I can go ahead and do that. And then you have some uh, different ways of filtering. You can also ascend and descend based on uh, the name or the first, the last name or the first name. That was on a project level. Any contact that is added in any project within your FileVine system is also going to be saved in your address book. You can find your address book on the top banner right here. And basically all of these contacts live within your system. 
So similar to the contact section in a project, you'll see them here. The only thing they don't have is the role because obviously this is not project specific. So it's just gonna have the actual contact. It will have any tags associated with that contact. If there is a, a contact type associated with that contact, you'll see those contact tags here, the contact types here, as well as the tags. It will have the address, email, and phone number. And then if there are multiple phone numbers or multiple email addresses, you can go ahead and scroll up and down. You can also email directly from here. So if you wanted to email this contact, you can go ahead and just hit the email and it will open up an email based on your uh, computer settings. Up here, you can filter by contact type. So let's say I just wanted to look at all adjusters. I can go ahead and toggle that on. I can also select more than one at a time. And then I can also search by tag. So maybe I wanna look at main. I can go ahead, hit that, and then any contact with this type of tag will, will show and filter out. Any contacts that are ar archived, I have access to just by toggling this on. And then if, again, if I wanted to add a contact into the system, but maybe it's not appropriate for a project yet, I can go ahead and hit this button over here and add that contact into our Filevine system. Just a reminder, any um, contacts added here in the address book are going to be added on a firm level, but are not going to be associated with any projects until you associate them with a project. Now, right from this address book section, what I can do is click on a contact, and then we'll have some uh, icons and, and options in the top right corner. This is gonna give us some basic information. It's gonna let us know their contact type, the company that they're with, their contact information, and then down here, we're gonna see associated projects. So any project where this contact lives will show up in this list on the right. It will give you the basic information of the project. You can also click on this to, to, to go directly to that project. And then we'll also tell you where that contact can be found. So this contact is in the case summary and it also is in the case summary once. It will indicate if it's throughout the project more than once as well. So you can see here in expense request, this QuickBooks Connect project, this contact is there four times and it just gives you an idea of where they are and their role within that project. Then up here, if you wanted to edit that contact, you can do that just by selecting that pencil icon. You can archive the contact, you can delete the contact. And again, if you want to find the information, you can also click this eye over here to do so. One thing your team should be doing is creating staff contact cards for each staff member within your firm or company. To do so, you can come to the address book um, section and then you can go ahead and add your contact card here. You'll want to make sure you put your name and your professional information. So if you have a direct phone number in your office, you, you'll want to put that here. You, if you can also put your main office phone number, your uh, work email address, and the address of your company or where you are um, located professionally. And then you want to make sure you're selecting the correct um, contact type. Typically, there will be a staff one. It may be the name of your firm. It may say staff. Um, but you want to make sure you're selecting that appropriately. And then you'll also want to fill out any details um, fields on the details tab. And then you can hit create and therefore your contact card will be in your in your file system and ready uh, for use in any project that you need to use it.